All right, so uh, right now what we're looking at here is a storm that continues to move inland. Um, with the power hit and some of the issues here, unfortunately, I couldn't hear a lot of what was being said. Uh, but what we can take away is that the worst is starting to impact here in southwest Florida. I know they moved inland there uh, in Bonita Springs and started to move northbound. And now as we uh, continue to look at the radar here, and Lauren, I believe we have control back here of okay. our radar. So this is uh, good to know. You can see the donut shape here, a very symmetrical eye wall of this hurricane as it continues to drift off towards the northeast. And the worst of this now is beginning to slide up the barrier islands. Our viewing area for Lee County goes up through Captiva and eventually right there towards Boca Grande. Very beautiful place if you've never been. And uh, it's a little bit of a drive as you curve back down the barrier islands, but they are right there on the edge as well. If uh, real fast, Lauren, if you yep. could just zoom me in. I know we're trying to do about 17 different things with this one computer. Live TV uh, though, right? So everyone please right? bear with so us. So right here, Sanibel, and we saw the one of those little vortexes quickly move across, and um, it Hold looks on. like we might. There, the radar is back. It's coming back. It's coming Sorry. back. Um, as we switch sources and load here, uh, we're looking at the radar and just to kind of reset for those of you who maybe you've never been through a hurricane or new or just were curious, this is the eye wall. This is the worst part of the hurricane that we have to go through today. The entire storm you see on the wide view does not contain those winds that are 155 miles per hour of Augusta 200. It's here. And it's right here in this eye wall. So I want to zoom in, Lauren, if we can, right here towards Sanibel in particular. I want to go up towards Captiva to Boca Grande, if we could get them both uh, kind of settled in a view here. Uh, and that is where we're seeing some of the strongest reflectivity returns on the radar. So as Lauren moves, there's Bowman and Turner's Beach. And now we're looking at Boca Grande. Look how close the edge of the most devastating part of that eye wall is getting there to some of the barrier islands. You've got Grove City to the north, and uh, you've got Rotunda, Placida right here on Cape Hayes. And that water is going to be moving here through Gasparilla Sound in the Charlotte Harbor and pushing inland. So this is an area we're going to continue to watch as we have the strongest winds making landfall and some of our most vulnerable spots here in southwest Florida. Now, the vulnerable spots are the areas that are only connected by bridges and those barrier islands that act to protect the mainland. The problem is, Lauren, you get a storm like this with storm surge up to 18 feet along the mm -hmm. coastline, and at points during the hurricane, water's going to come up and over almost every part of these islands. And so, Trent, we just got that 11 o'clock advisory, and there was no change to the storm surge, thankfully, and that's so one of the 18. first times that that has happened been all morning long. Yep. Every advisory, it's been going up. Uh, we also got an alert that there was an extreme wind warning. So I just want to read this off for everyone. Uh, so that went out at 1045. It lasts for two hours. That's going to be until 1245. Uh, they want you to know that this is an extremely dangerous and life-threatening situation is what they are saying. A tornado watch remains in effect as well until 5 p.m. So this is going to be for areas. Let's take a look. It's um, extreme winds associated uh, seven miles south of mm -hmm. St. James City and then 14 miles southwest of Cape Coral. So that's a very large polygon that is going to be yeah. circled across all of Lee County that is associated with this new warning. Sure. And at this point, I know the warnings are coming in and we get them and yeah. they serve a purpose on alerting your phone if you're in those locations. But for us here, our job is to take the radar and we're going to show you where the worst is at and where you're anticipating uh, those very, very uh, strong damaging winds of the hurricane. As we get each radar scan and you watch this red just whip around, it, it almost looks like there's frames missing in the radar, but there's not. It's how fast those are moving around. And right each there. one of those vortices as they rotate around the storm contain tornadoes inside them. And with wind sustained at that amount, it's absolutely devastating the damage that is going to happen as this eye continues to move in. Again, these are very vulnerable spots on the barrier islands. You're looking at North Captiva Island. You've got the South Sea Resort. Mm -hmm. It's one of Amy and I's favorite places here in Southwest Florida. And right now they are taking the brunt. But look at the way the winds are going to be wrapping around. They're actually going to get a little bit of a surge 
from the east mm -hmm. to the west. And that's because of the way the eye wall is working right now. And as this continues to drift to the north, the winds in Boca Grande are going to come due west as well. And you can see some of the heavier rain bands even moving north there of Punta Gorda. I want to go back out, if I will, if you don't mind me driving no, the bus here for just a second. And uh, just kind of get a reset on where the eye of the storm is currently located. Here are the rain bands inland. You're hearing heavy rain from Port Charlotte. You've tapered off a little bit for areas for Lehigh Acres, uh, Alva, Buckingham, uh, but the center, the core of this hurricane on a projected path here off to the northeast is going to continue to move and push water in from Estero Boulevard, Fort Myers Beach southbound. And this surge is what the National Hurricane Center is calling life-threatening now. Yeah. Uh, it went up from 12 when we started on air this morning with our wall-to-wall -wall coverage and we've seen it bump up throughout the day. Yeah, it went to 16 and then it went to 18. So again, thankfully with that 11 o'clock advisory, uh, we're not having to deal with that. Trent, you were just briefly talking about how the Boca Grande area, you said mm -hmm. it was going to see the opposite effect eventually of that right. storm surge. That's because the winds will be going no longer out of the southwest, but will be wrapping around in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see the wind kind of uh, push all of that water back out to the Gulf. But here's the thing, as the system continues to move to the northeast, storm surge will continue to be a problem as it moves up and down the coast. So uh, yeah. we are just in the beginning of all of these threats. And the hurricane force winds around the center extend out 80 miles. Now that's the estimate based on what the hurricane hunters are finding. The National Hurricane Center gives us that range uh, in the um, discussion. And typically you have to look at a hurricane and see how it's not form, but see how it's shaped, mm -hmm. meaning that sometimes you get some dry air moved in or some shear, and they tend to be a little lopsided. That's not the case with Ian. This one is almost perfect, and as far as this uh, being symmetric, it's got plenty of moisture to work with. You looked at the water vapor loop here throughout the morning, kind of did a little analysis, and there's simply nothing that inhibited the storm, and that's why we saw it go from 120 to 155 earlier today. And Trent, when I take a look at our monitor, it looks like that we were just showing you maybe a live look. I think it was the the pier, the Fort Myers Beach Pier. I'm not exactly sure what that was. If we could try and get that back up, because not yeah. only did I see a lot of rain right there, mm -hmm. but it was the waves yeah. just crashing over. And that's just something that we're going to start to see more and more up and down the coast. Throughout the morning, and when I glanced over, it almost looked like the Skyview Bridge out of Tampa. I wasn't sure. And when that bridge there to the north, it, they shut it down, obviously. And it was very, very ominous starting yeah. early this morning. Uh, and that's up in the Tampa area, which is off the screen here, just showing you the broad circulation here um, of this hurricane. So what we do, we're doing now here in Southwest Florida, uh, we started before 11 o'clock, was it about 1030? Mm -hmm. And we took a minute to kind of take a breath and reset because the tone of our coverage was changing. It wasn't a time to prepare. It wasn't a time to talk. It was a time to act. And that hasn't changed. No. especially for areas along the coast in our barrier islands. So right now, again, for those of you who maybe have uh, lost power, maybe you're streaming us on a live device, you're still getting our broadcast in Sanibel and uh, North Captiva on up towards Boca Grande. Right now, you're just entering the northeastern part of the eye wall of this hurricane. This is when we start to see those winds uh, approach well over 100 and get into the 155 range uh, when the National Hurricane Center sends their aircraft in to measure the storm. They drop instruments out of the airplane and to drop them right in the eye wall to try to get the peak wind speed. And it is again right there around that donut shaped eye wall. The worst of this storm as it begins uh, to move on shore. Yeah, so don't, I'm so sorry. It probably looks like I'm being really distracted, but uh, we're getting cues. I'm trying to communicate with the people back in the control room, and we're also getting a lot of information flooding in here. Uh, Amy and Chris, for example, I see you guys are putting some reports of flooding inside of our chats. Yeah, we're working to get some uh, video from Sanibel on right now. It's okay. Lindgren and East Gulf North. Uh, the, the, it's live pictures, and they're pretty stunning. Um, Yep. Yeah. So this is going to be a live okay. look at the streets this, that you're talking about right now. This is, a, this is a different one, actually, but you can see a lot of water in this camera as well. Um, the camera that I'm looking at, and it's kind of hard to tell what this one is, if that is a, a home or a building there on the side of the road. 
this is Sanibel, and um, it's just it's hard to tell exactly what this is or how high the water is. I'm looking at another live camera at Lingren in East Gulf North, where the water is up on the stop sign to the bottom of the actual stop sign. So you imagine okay. a couple of feet up or a few feet up in the air, and then you have the stop sign. The water is touching the bottom of that stop sign and, and you street said sign. Golf Drive in uh, it's it's East, East Gulf, Gulf North. North. East, Gulf, East Gulf North. Okay. okay. So yeah. the uh, flooding concerns there, Chris, with the storm surge. Uh, anytime you look at Sanibel, we've got a couple of monitors we're looking at here. Uh, the areas that are impacted on that island, it's coming in out of the south. It's pushing water up and over that island. So that just kind of gives you an idea you think of where the bottom of that octagon is on a stop sign mm -hmm. it's five feet tall at least easily on, on most of them uh, i stand five ten and a lot of times they're right at the top of my head so you're looking at roughly six feet of storm surge on parts of Sanibel already, and they're just getting started. Mm -hmm. I want to reiterate that the movement of the storm only at 10 miles per hour, so this is going to be a prolonged storm surge event until we can get this eye away from the coastline and eventually inland. And is that the video there, Chris? It is, yeah, that's the okay. live camera. Yeah, boy, you can see that water all the way up there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this just kind of gives you an idea of what we're experiencing in Sanibel, and this is exactly why uh, the island was evacuated. Mm -hmm. And I know some of you probably stayed in Sanibel. Hopefully you can still hear us here to get the latest information, but we are just starting with this storm. Um, when you go through a hurricane, you go through every eye, part of the eye wall when it moves across you. First, it's the uh, leading edge, but in this case in Sanibel, it's going to be the northeastern side. And depending upon how exactly the storm moves, which right now looks like the center may come ashore somewhere around North Captiva or even Boca Grande. I'm going to zoom this out just a touch here. It's a very touching mouse. It, so it's, it's a very touchy mouse today. Um, Right, let's do it right there. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. All right, so if you look at the overall movement, northeast to north, we have to watch for wobbles, and we talk about this all the time. We get uh, placements from the National Hurricane Center now every hour, and while uh, the reason a hurricane would start to wobble at this point is it feels the land. I know it sounds silly, but it's almost like these storms are alive. It wants fuel. It yep. wants the, the energy from the ocean and it feels the friction. The overall rotation feels that tug of uh, the land from Fort Myers all the way over to Lake Okeechobee and sometimes that can make it turn ever so slightly to the north and that could allow the landfall to continue to be a little bit up into Charlotte County or Charlotte Harbor. It's just a matter of how far inland it goes. Uh, but bottom line right now is Sanibel Island uh, went from being Lauren right there on the northeastern part of the eye wall to right now it looks like it's starting to enter the eastern part of the eye wall with landfall still a little bit away as if you just kind of project the overall motion. We're still looking possibly somewhere here, Cape Hayes, Charlotte County. So those little wobbles we see every time we get a new scan in are going to become key. And so Trent, I kind of just want to put it into perspective for people who are listening right now. You talked about that friction and the fuel, which mm -hmm. is very common when you start to have these hurricanes that ride up and down the uh, the coast. Uh, it was your former colleague, it was my former mm -hmm. professor who really put it out for me and made it so simple to understand these systems. They're going to almost be like driving on the highway. It's going to want to tug in because yep. of the friction, but the fuel is in the warm Gulf water. So it almost has a mind of its own here. Yep. It's going to want to turn back out to the water because it wants that fuel. It wants to uh, continue to uh, have that almost chimney effect, something else that you and I have talked about. Yeah because you can tell when something is really uh, starting to strengthen when it comes to a tropical system because you can kind of see that on infrared satellite. Yeah, and as we kind of watch this movement as well, the longer we can keep this entire core mm -hmm. off the coastline here in southwest Florida, the better off we are. Uh, but unfortunately, here in the next couple of hours, we're starting to approach noon at 1126. Lord, it's inevitable that somewhere here in our viewing area, someone is going to take the brunt of the landfall of the storm, both on the north and south side of the eye wall. And currently, even though the storm is offshore, we are getting that storm surge from Sanibel all the way south to Marco Island, uh, with the worst of it being likely right here around the Montanzas Pass, stretching southbound, because that water hits the island mm -hmm. and it's going to find its way through. And then when you get there towards the Montanzas Pass Bridge, 
you know the water there. You know some of the famous views, such as Nervous Nellie's, when you're looking in towards the shrimp boats. You got the Dixie uh, Fish House. Doc those, Fords is all oh, right Doc there Fords. as well. You know, those areas there, that water has risen, and mm -hmm. we're waiting to see some video or possibly some live cams here throughout the morning, but I guarantee you it's going to be some historic flooding levels there for Fort Myers Beach. And Trent, we're talking about the coast right now because that's the area that's being impacted mm -hmm. by that eye wall, but we're starting sure. to get some measurements for areas that are closer to up and down I-75, and even there, they're still dealing with the impacts of this uh, storm. For example, Fort Myers over at Page Field, uh, they are looking at wind gusts currently up to about 66 miles per hour okay. out of the east-southeast. And that direction, uh, you know, kind of just really goes to show you the winds wrapping around yep. this very powerful hurricane right now. We've been showing you that wind field graphic all yep. week, and we go from those weak tropical storm force winds to a little stronger, and eventually we start to get into those stronger uh, hurricane force winds. So uh, it's just a sit and wait. I don't know how else to say it. I uh, wish we just had a button. We could just get this guy on out of here. Uh, but we are in this for a while. With the movement of just 10 miles per hour, uh, we're looking at uh, hours and hours, six to eight, before we start to get this storm inland and weakening. Once this starts interacting with land, uh, the Hurricane Center was forecasting this to eventually weaken to a category one, but a strong one at that. Yeah, so I do want to get.